Are you saying you faked with me? Yeah. wrong now you're single what do you know about sexual relations is it true that if you don't use it you lose it i'm a little worried about being a slut you're listening to the come with us podcast talking the good the kinky and the ugly here are your hosts beth aaron and tina hello 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 all you sexy holes and poles and oh my goodness all those cute little asses out there just dying for a spanking Oh, welcome to Come With Us podcast, where we know that sexy stuff matters as much as the lovey-dovey stuff, and we are here to help you get all the pleasure you deserve. Specifically, in this case, we want to help you get all the sexy, erotic, spanking pleasure, success. I don't know. I'm trying to keep that alliteration sensation. going. But sensation. Thank you. There you go. Yes. Sexy, spanking sensations going and fueling you for you, for your partner, because Spanking is just so damn fun. So damn fun. Whether you like just a little sensation, a lot of sensation, whether you like the power part of it, or you just like the physicality of it, it doesn't matter to us. We want to help you get whatever it is that makes you, that floats your boat, um, floods your, I don't know. Geez. Nether regions? Yes. Thank you there. <laughs> why Aaron and I, we can just, we could do this all day. I just like start a sentence and you finish it. That yeah. would be awesome. So I'm Beth Darling from BethDarling.com here with Aaron. Um, and again, Tina's off gallivanting. So I know she likes a good spanking, but uh, hopefully she'll be back sooner or later. She'll come back to this world with us. But uh, all right. So last week, Aaron, we sort of, we started with the spanking and we talked about um, how to bring it up that it's okay. We talked about kind of the, the, the myths, the, the fact that it's got to be consensual and stuff. So if you didn't listen to last week's, I strongly encourage you to also just a little bit about, um, as Aaron said, how to approach things with your partner and how to maybe explore things that you might not have realized that you would enjoy, but um, to do that in a way that works for everybody. So, and we covered why spanking is such a freaking pleasure. Uh, all right. So where should we start today? I've got pages and pages of notes. I got so excited about this I mean, topic. shit, just pick a spot and go. I mean, we, at some point we need to actually give, you know, you have plenty of tips and everything for how to do it, how to approach it, or not approach it, but you know, the actual Oh yeah, we talked about how to approach from, it. From, you know, Okay. The, the How actual to. physical, yeah, the the, the step by step okay. guide on okay. you've already talked to your partner. You want to spank them. They want to be spanked, or you want to be spanked, and they want to spank you. Whatever. This is the, the, we need to get into the what's the best way to um, go about it so that it doesn't turn out. You know, nobody slams on the brakes five seconds in and go nope. Yeah. And if you do, if it if they try it once and you go, eh, I mean, I'm always the person who will try things two or three times normally, uh, depending on, I mean, it depends on my reaction. There's some things that I would try, like, <laughs> I say mushrooms. I try mushrooms every, like, three years, and every time I try them, still, no, disgusting. Oh, um, okay. Well, that's a whole nother conversation. I had some good times. I was like, oh, the whole world is like Disney World on neon. More, please. <laughs> But, I was like, I never want to be sober again. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if your reaction to the very first time it happens is an immediate, oh, hell no, fuck, like, nope, that ain't going to work. Yeah. Okay, cool. You know, no shame. No, there's, I'm not judging you. I have no place to judge or no responsibility to judge yeah. anybody in this world. But uh, if you know the first time it happens and you're like, eh, that wasn't okay or that wasn't what I thought it would be, give it another chance. Do it two right. or more times. See what happens. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Just realize that we think somehow, especially as we get older, we think as adults, we're supposed to know everything and do everything right the first time. Throw that out the window uh, and just agree with your partner that you're trying things and you're going to have fun. Again, good time or a good story or if you're lucky, both. But all I right. Mean, so if you're, if the you're how trying to. something new and you're worried about it, sorry, get, yeah. throw this in there for a second. If you're trying something new and you're worried about it, Think of it this way that it was explained to me when I was uh, a young salesman still in college. Um, if you go, I was told, you know, they asked, hey, did you did you push for this? No. Or did, did you try to sell them a set of wheels? No. 
Why? Because I got told no the last three times. Okay, if you go to a bar and you hit on three girls, does that mean you're just going to go home? Or are you going to try for number four or number five or number six until the bar closes down? Then you go, all right, cool. It's just me and myself and I tonight. Like, don't, it, you know, don't give yeah. up on, on one. Don't right. think that just because it happens once, it's not going to be great. So, yeah. 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 That anyway, was the story. Right. Go back and listen. And you'll hear my story because I gave up the first time and never got it again. So. Exactly. Yeah. And you didn't but... know what you were missing. I know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You had an idea what you were missing. but Exactly. But How much more know. complete would you have been had you press yes. pressured the subject? Which, again, I said this last yeah. episode, good, because you, you don't need to be with that right. guy. No, but I'm so right. Exactly. I'm where I need to be. Everything right. happens for a reason. Yeah. That's Sorry. Good. Long story short. So, Go ahead. Okay. All right. So let's talk about how to. All right. So um, um, listeners, if you guys want, you can even take notes on this. Okay. Because I've got. We've got some very specific um, outlines. Again, I made eight pages of notes on this topic, which doesn't happen very often. Um, but all right, I think the first thing people need to do is to agree on some, quote, safe words. Um, safe words meaning that, so code red. Think of it like a stop sign, right? Red, yellow, and green. Red means stop. So within anything, I think in life, I think the code code red is way better than the term no. Because frankly, when I'm getting spanked, I like to say no, no, no. But I don't really mean stop. I just need to express. I need to protest. For me, protesting is part of the pleasure. Um, but code red is non-negotiable stop, period. Don't discuss it. Don't argue. Just stop. Let time go by. And then you can discuss it sometime later. But don't discuss it in the in the middle of it. Don't keep pursuing. Don't think this is a time to practice those sales things. Oh, let me try it for another code red. No, no, no. Code red, stop, period. Yeah, okay. Yellow is uh, like I'm getting close. So maybe if you're in the middle of spanking somebody and they're kind of like, okay, this is like my max, they might say code yellow, just yellow. And that just means be careful, caution. If you keep going, then you may get to a code red and hopefully... You don't because you want the sexy fun to continue. Green is hell yeah, keep going. This is good. I'm all in, right? Don't don't let the don't let your foot off the gas. Just keep going. So, um, yeah, and you can just think like yellow. It's getting a little intense, but I want to keep playing. So, all right. So I think agree on some safe words. Don't make up some bullshit pineapple or three bean salad or stupid stuff because you want it basic and really in the midst of things. I don't know if I told you this, but the first time I played with somebody and was getting flogged, I was doing no, no, no. And finally she said, you know, you know that no doesn't, you know, doesn't mean code red. I was like, oh, shit, I totally forgot. Right. I was so in the middle of stuff. I was like, no, code red, code red. <laughs> and it was good. So she helped me with that. But that's why we always want to make sure that we use these safe words. And it's just easier if you use the same ones over and over and over again so that there's no doubt about it. So, um, and plus in a bar, if you yell code red, other people should understand that means hell, like jump in. I, I think code red should a be bar. Universal. Well, no, but if people are coming onto you or doing something, I just think there's so many times we say no and people don't really know that we mean fuck no, you know? So rather than fuck no, I think code red should just be universal. And mm. so this is my I personal agree, mission, but, but at the same anyway. time, if, if, I were hitting on a woman at a bar and she said code red to me, I'd be more confused than anything. Well, but I, this is why but, I think everybody should use it because then I think people around should step in and say, you need to get away. She said code red, get the hell out of here. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Anyway. And you know, after our boundaries issue, like episode and stuff, this is a, this is a tender subject for me, but anyway. So, okay. So agree on some safe words. Um, and then think about positions. Think about positions in part because we actually want people to be relaxed. If your body is tense, your muscles clench, your butt clenches, and that makes spanking less pleasurable. So the person who's receiving the spanking needs to be in a good position. The person giving the spanking should be in a good, comfortable position. Um, and these are things you can talk about in advance because, again, there are for some people, the idea Aaron was saying last time, 
again, go back and listen, you know, about what a, what a bent over woman does for his libido and his drive and stuff. Um, so we all have different kinds of positions that might turn us on more or less. So don't be afraid to say that and the clothing, whether there's clothing on or there's clothing off and stuff, but so let's think. So some of the positions you clearly like the, um, the, a woman bent over. What about the idea of her bent over your knees? Is that what like you're thinking? Too. Yeah. Okay. Over the knee spanking is pretty That's, damn popular, I think. It is. It just depends on like. That's something that you got to like think about and be logistically sound uh -huh. about. Like if you're going to do it on a couch. It's it's, it's doable, but it's more over like at that point in time, it's over your like the upper part of your lap and stuff like that um which i mean some people don't see there's anything wrong with it but if it turns you on to spank somebody and you've got a gorgeous woman draped across your lap and the blood starts flowing down to your dick guess what your dick's gonna get hard it's gonna start if you have underwear on or not it's gonna start pushing up because it needs to you know relieve <laughs> the pressure that's building up behind it right so you're gonna end up with either like stabbing her right in the stomach or it's not going to like it Every guy knows adjust. like if there's a situation where you're there's blood there and your dick's getting hard and it can't fully go, it hurts after a while. So at least think that logistically through. Yeah. Um, but That's yeah, I mean, in bed, it works. Uh, it just depends on if you have yeah. a bench. I, I mean, there are actual like a lot of people have, you know, a bench in their mud room where they put, you know, take their shoes on or put them well, on or all that kind of stuff or one in the bedroom. Yeah, or maybe even just over a coffee table or something. I mean, but so yeah. be aware, right? There are. I'm talking about for over the knees. Oh, okay. And like I'm thinking you're putting you her over sit on the or him yeah. over your knee. Yeah, that that being yeah. old. Yeah, yeah, because we've got plenty of other positions to worry about. I mean, there's even yeah. fucking uh, what I what I learned from when we talked about uh, how to build a sex room, spanking benches. Those oh, exist yes. if you've got if you're that yes. into it and you have that kind of those kind of funds. I guarantee there's somebody in your neck of the woods that makes them and sells them probably on Etsy that will deliver it to your door and it'll be probably decent craftsmanship. Well, yeah, some of them. Again, I've seen better and let, but find out. But certainly there are tons and a spanking bench is awesome. I had one actually on my in my game room for a while. <laughs> and my daughter at one point is like, okay, I don't understand. How do how do two people like how do you spank each other at the same time? <laughs> I was like, look and go, no, honey, just, just one person on the bench, one person. Oh, that makes much more sense. Anyway, I was like, she got her spatials from me. You know? <laughs> it's like, but, um, but yeah, so again, find different things, but you can do, you can bend over, uh, the bed. You can bend over a piece of furniture. You can bend over the arm of the sofa. Yeah. Sometimes the couch, that's yeah. better than the couch or the back of the couch or, or chair. You can lie on your stomach or stand, but sometimes I think that you get a little bit better access if you're at least, if your knees, you know, so you're sort of, so your ass is above the, um, the bed. Cause it's just easier to do a side arm rather than to yeah. do a smack down, I think. But again, you can decide. Um, one thing I think is important is to recognize Use pillows or, or cushions, especially when you're first beginning, right? If you're not just trying to torture, if you're not into BDSM serious power stuff, realize that you want controlled sensation, not accidental discomfort. So just get things situated. And by the way, one of my other codes is code blue, which is technical difficulty. So if you're in an awkward position and you need to adjust, but you don't want the spanking to end, you know, if you just say stop or something, people get defensive. If you just say code blue, that's technical difficulty. Just say, oh, my leg is cramped or whatever. I need a pillow. And you can adjust and still keep the sexy mood going. That also works if your dick is hard and you need to like move it out of the way from like being bent. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, how was I thinking? Oh, those wedge pillows. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. They sell them on every freaking website now and they're not super expensive. You don't need to get the really fancy like firm one you could just get one and trust me they work good for other things too like sitting up writing in bed or, or you know yeah. doing any working in bed or sitting up watching tv and eating soup when you're sick in bed because i've done that recently um yeah so wedge pillows are a good thing to have not only for the spanking thing but for other aspects of your non-sexy life 
But right. yeah, you can but find, you, I guarantee you can find one that's affordable. Yeah. And you can put, because you can buy some that are specially, like the covers will come off and you can wash and they're waterproof. But yep. otherwise you can also just get a smaller, like a waterproof pad or something like that and put it on top of the wedge pillow to protect it from things. Hell, you can use a puppy pad. Puppy pads are great for all sorts of sexy stuff. And they'll soak stuff up or hospital pads or something. So lots of different ways. But yeah, wedge pillow is a great thing. So um, there's also like you could tie somebody spread eagle, you could use under the bed restraints, you can use a sex swing, like have them bent over a sex swing, or there are doorway cups that somebody will be so all sorts of crazy, wonderful, fun, easy positions. So also just enjoy them, right? Just try and see. But um, Okay, so the one thing I suggest, though, that now you've got this position, you've got your safe words, you're kind of ready to go. But some people just like, like, okay, now I'm just going to spank, wham. So two things. One, you never just want to start with a big wham, unless you're really trying to cause really intense sensation. Um, but two, I think that you really want to make sure the person is turned on even before you start any spanking turn them on. So how can you turn them on? You might be talking about, oh, I can't wait. Oh, look at your ass. It's just begging me. Ooh, like tickle, you know, do run your hand down their spine, rub your hand, pull up their thighs, um, touch them, go, oh, don't you want me to touch you, right? Tease the hell out of them using whatever kind of emotional intimacy you've got. Use everything you know about this person to get them turned on so that they cannot wait to have your hand on their ass in terms of a spanking. So this is um, where knowing your partner uh, and knowing their, their style and everything comes in really handy too, because yeah. if they have a responsive libido or if they have, you know, they need to be warmed up a bit for stuff like that. Like my wife knows like mine is like a light switch. I could be literally, you know, right. working on something, not paying attention to anything. If she walks up and just smacks the hell out of my ass, it's immediately going to make me go, all right, cool. That's that. Uh, Cool. Light switch on. So right. knowing and, your and yet a lot of women, yeah, a lot of women are like, no, right. If we're not, if we're not sort of excited, if we're not aroused somehow emotionally, physically, that first just a smack like that is really it's just annoying. It's yeah. just like we're not there. So um oh, I'm sure there's probably men who are just, like that too. I'm just probably, I'm very yeah. I'm very simplistic. Yeah. So so just Make sure, but so use what you know, and this is part of when you figure out what it is that your partner enjoys is about spanking, then use that to help turn them on. Um, and then again, think about whether they're going to be clothed or not clothed and let that go. Because sometimes the act of like, for me, if I'm bent over me having to raise my skirt up to, to, to expose my ass, like, oh my God, that's so again, a little bit of humiliation, if you will. And yet that turns me on again. I just think I was so shamed by all of my sexual desires that the only way that I can really embrace them is if I'm quote forced to, it's not great. I'm not recommending it, but this is where I am. So trying to just work with that makes a big difference. So use that and think about that so that you basically you're setting the mood and you're getting everybody turned on before you even start with the spanking. So, um, and then, and, and I should say before you even start with that sort of real physical, but then warm up their ass, warm up their ass. And again, here we're talking about erotic spankings. We're talking primarily their ass. So start rubbing, caressing, massaging the spankies, but right, just again, because what you do is you get all those nerve endings going, hello, you get the blood and oxygen flowing around there and it just starts begging and you can see, have you ever like spanked your wife and her, her ass will like basically come up almost to greet your hand. It just can't wait for the next impact. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Isn't that an awesome feeling? I mean, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it is at the same time. It's, uh, and again, we go back to the power thing. We talked about it a lot last episode when it happens, then it's a, all right, cool. Now, like she's expecting it. She wants it. Now it's how long am I going to like hold back and control myself from doing it? Because I enjoy doing it. Do 
do I want to delay it because I know it's going to be agonizing for her knowing that she wants it at the same time. And, you know, do you use the fake like the oh and like all you do is like swing over so they get that rush of air knowing that oh here like because even when it happens if you're if you're gonna high five somebody in that rush of air you feel the air moving towards you and you can Mm -hmm. feel it on your on your skin and your nerve endings that's another way to and and honestly tease your partner of it is do it and then do the do the swing and a miss golf style or baseball style just up miss because then they get that rush of air going by and then mentally yeah. they're expecting it and they're bracing for it and it's not there. And then it's kind of a letdown and it's hilarious. Yeah. And it's yeah. a little bit like edging, right? Where you're just yeah. waiting and then you don't get there and you're like, no more. Right. It just intensifies arousal and heightens all of our, um, our sensory awareness. So, yeah. And then when you do start spanking, then definitely start light, start light. Even if you're experienced at spanking, you want to start light because you want to give their bodies time to adjust. You want the blood and oxygen to flow around. You want even a very light spanking will start some of those endorphins going and being flooded. And the way that people build up to getting a really intense spanking is because those endorphins go and then they aren't quite as sensitive and they're looking for more and more intensity and more and more sensation from it. So always just start spanking lightly, gradually work your way up and check in with your partner while you're doing this, especially if you've never done this before. But again, check in with them in a way that keeps the sexy mood. Don't just be like, oh, well, how am I doing? And don't look for the gold star because that is a great way to totally take them out of their body, put them in their mind is to ask them to basically reassure you. Oh, am I doing this right? Yes, honey, of course you are. Of course. Oh, you're such a good boy. Good for you. Or you're such a good girl, right? No, right? Don't do that. Keep it sexy. So just say, oh, how are you liking this? Are you wishing it was more? Are you ready for more? I don't know if I'm ready to give you more, but are you ready for more? Or would you prefer lighter and give them a really light thing? Oh, which one do you like better? You know, and play with it. Better one better two. And, um, and then you can also use a scale of one to 10 and say, Oh, I'm holding back. I think I'm using like a two or something. What does this feel like to you? How, how intense, how much do you like this on a scale of one to 10, you know, and that way then they get to stay in their body. Yeah. Not make you feel better. And I mean, you can even use the teasing aspect. That was a two. I, I'm not going any higher than a four. Cause I know you couldn't handle it kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. And wait for them to be like, no, 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 please, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was a two to you. It only felt like a less than two. Yeah. I, I've done that before. And then I've gotten a big one. Like, you know, but yeah. But again, you can play these games when you actually, you get a sense of who people are and where things are. Yeah. But having as the spanker reflecting where you think you are and having them validate where they are receiving is a big difference because I mean, is a big help because there can be a big difference. Um, Sometimes you just don't quite understand how much, how strong you are. But this is also a good reason why you should start with your hands, not use paddles and things like that, because that is much harder to gauge. So anybody who's curious and intrigued by the idea of spanking, start with hand stuff first, please. I think. Yeah. So Um, and if somebody's really nervous, you can suggest, you can just spank over their underwear or clothes first, that way they get a sense and things get warmed up before it really is bare skin and they understand. And you've got this communication going where they can feel safe and know that if they tell you something or whatever, and if they have the code red, that they can just stop it. Um, but a lot of times people who start spanking with their clothes on, the, the spanky is like, no, I need more. Like, take them down now, right? I need to feel you more. I think that's a wonderful thing. When somebody says, I need to feel you. Fucking awesome. So, um, and then when you start, in terms of spanking, this sounds silly, but keep your fingers together. You know, cup your, cup your hand a little bit and keep your fingers together. If you spread your fingers out, you cause more um, intensity and more sensation. So at least at the beginning, keep them cupped, keep your fingers together. And that will help just people you get used to things. And um, 
Same thing with paddles. If you use a paddle with a hole in it, much, 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 much stronger. Make sure you don't have any rings on too. Oh, good point. Yeah. Or, or any type of like jewelry Bracelet. or anything like that. Yeah. Anything yeah. like that. That's the, that's an easy way to, you know, especially if, women, if you're the one doing the spanking, then yeah. If you have any type of design or ornament on that ring, or it's your, you're using your left hand and it's your engagement ring, your wedding ring, all it takes a little bit of a turn. And all of a sudden that design or that ornament on the ring hits with that impact. And then it doesn't feel good because then it not only does it hit, but it pinches the skin because there it's got to have somewhere to go. Yeah. And yeah. Just yeah. And it's unintentional again, because we want you to do, we want you to be in control of the sensations. That's all. So we're just going to try and cut out external things. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then in terms of the actual spanking, you want to, you want to focus on the fleshy part of the ass, the fleshy part, right? So, and again, this is where having a, you know, having some curves on you, having a little bit of extra oomph in your butt is a good thing. But then um, kind of the sweet spot is actually to hit the bottom, like fleshy side and sort of hit it up. And I mean, up if you're, if somebody's standing, so it's going, you're taking it from their thighs sort of upward towards their head. That's kind of this sweet sensation. And I think in part, that's so good because that gets all the different nerve endings that are going down to the cock or the pussy and stuff like that. So you're sort of scooping it upward. And again, that's why when you're just somebody's flat on down on a bed or something, it's just a little bit harder to get that up motion because you're just then hitting flat down. It doesn't do as much. So fleshy part of the butt upwards motion, try avoid the bones, avoid the tailbone. Um, the side, I'll tell you, women's hips and stuff are a lot more sensitive. Um, so generally, if you start, especially on the ass, you can work down to the crease between the thighs and stuff. But I would wait until you really understand and you know what you're doing and how your partner likes it, et cetera, before you do. But then spanking the thighs, spanking the inner thighs can be pretty cool. Um, and we'll talk about other places to spank <laughs> when you're like, when you're more of an expert spanker, if you will. So, um, okay. And also spanking doesn't have to be, it's like, just like a blowjob. People think, oh, it's just all about your mouth. No, no, no. There's so many more things you could do for a blowjob. The same thing with spanking. Don't think you just have to constantly spank. You want to rub, you want to stroke the butt. You want to like give it a smack and then you might want to touch. Maybe you want to kiss it. Um, maybe you just want to, to squeeze it a little bit. Um, but make it just vary it. And then also generally don't hit just the same place over and over and over again, unless you are trying to cause a bruise, because that's what will cause a bruise. So you got two cheeks there, alternate if you want, find a nice rhythm, like percussion players. Oh my gosh. Percussionists are the best spankers. Oh yes. Yes. They get a good rhythm going. It just feels like, oh God, it's making me hot. Just thinking about it. <gasps> yeah. So don't be afraid, find your rhythm, enjoy. Um, and again, once you know what your partner is liking and you're amping it up, it's really tons of fun. So um, cover a wide surface area because that's again, gonna help all the blood flow in that area. And, um, and then, but if they do say yellow, then move on to someplace else, okay? Um, and let's see. Oh, you'd want to avoid kidneys, by the way. That's not good. Yeah, that's way high. Don't go high. Yeah, yeah. It's not really, it's not really good. So, yeah. um, but definitely experimenting. And then you can sort of flatten your hand. If things are really going well, you want to start spreading your fingers and you can play with the sound that Aaron likes so much. So as well as just um, all these different experiences and everything like that. So um and sometimes your hand can get sore, by the way. Don't feel bad. So, but if you really get into spanking, there also you can wear leather gloves and stuff. There are different gloves you can wear for spanking too. Um, but uh okay, and then let let's see. Um, oh, don't 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 move up to paddles, belts, straps until you've done this several times, please, because that's just a good way to go from kind of a level five to a level twelve and shut things down. If you get too excited, then you can just blow the whole thing. So yeah. 
go slowly, go slowly and enjoy it. Um, okay. S subspace. So we talked about those endorphins going and stuff. So heads up that those endorphins can cause what's called a subspace or, um, a top space, which is that we can get actually a little bit high, which one can make us not, um, make great decisions. So don't ask major, major things then, but, um, just think if you think of it like a buzz where we're just kind of like, oh, maybe it's a little bit harder to speak or we're slurring our words a little bit or our body is becoming more lethargic, et cetera. Just watch out for that. I think I think actually, Aaron, we should do a show about subspace sometime. Um, but in this case, just beware that people can have a very physical high, just like if they were drinking or smoking or something and be aware of that. And if you start noticing that, it's probably a good time to kind of shut things down in terms of the more sensation and stuff and to move on to something else. But, um, okay, but then when you're ready to stop, don't stop abruptly. Don't stop abruptly, right? That's like, you know, coitus interruptus, spanking interruptus. Oh, so frustrating, so frustrating. I mean, trains don't stop on a dime. Think of it like a train. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then it becomes a question of, okay, so how do you stop? So there are some different ideas. So one, just ease up, just ease up so that you're still kind of going, but now you're going slower. You're going more gently. You're spending more time rubbing. You're spending more time massaging. You're more time kissing. Maybe your hands roam and you start exploring someplace else so that you're moving it's a segue from one thing to another, but it's smooth. It's not an interrupted, like, okay, psh, throw, you know, push you off, <laughs> fall on the floor. Okay. Now. Right. Um, so do it like there's a story, right? Continue somehow, make it sort of flow. But if you want, you could even start, especially if somebody's really nervous about spanking, you can start by saying, okay, I'm going to give you 10 spankings or 15 spank or five. And that way you both know when it's going to end. And that, becomes easier so that neither one of you is thinking, oh, the other one's bored or when are they going to get tired of it or something. So if you're the one spanking somebody, I will tell you a good way to notice is if they, we talked about the beginning, if their butt is moving up to meet your hand, they're into it. When their butt is pulling away from you, they're not so into it anymore. So be aware of that. And that's probably a good time to just sort of stop <laughs> and move on to something else. Um, and if you're using spanking for like discipline, like, oh, you did something wrong. So now you're going to get a spanking, then maybe it becomes, have you learned your lesson? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. I've learned my lesson. Okay. All right. Then we can stop. And then you go into the massaging, blah, blah, blah. And you use that segue. So, um, you can move on to another sexual activity or you can go straight to aftercare. Okay. So, um, okay. Aftercare. Do you guys have, I don't know, have you all played with aftercare, Aaron? Uh, aftercare a little bit. I mean, it, it just depends. Like we don't have full on like sessions of it or anything like that. It's okay. more of a just in the moment kind of thing. Uh, okay. I mean, we know what it is. We, It's just part of it. Um, okay. But it, it's not something that we prioritize because we haven't gone that full like. You haven't uh, gotten to the yeah, high. We haven't gone balls of the wall on this stuff yet. Okay. All right. Well, so aftercare can be very simple. Like, you know, it's the snuggling after sexy stuff, really. But sometimes people like, again, because you get this, this rush, this runner's high, and just like runner, a, a train that doesn't stop on a dime. So there's all this stuff still going on. It can feel very abrupt to suddenly end it and now just be on your own. So aftercare is just a way of kind of connecting and maintaining that connection, even after the spanking or sexy stuff has um has ended so it can be snuggles it can be just touches it can be kind words it can be hydrating like just getting somebody a drink it can be nourishment okay oh you must be hungry let me get you something um and being prepared having things by the bed or around you know ready for you and stuff is just wonderful so that both of you get to just enjoy this instead of one of you running up to go do stuff um, and taking time, but it can be warm music, comfort. It could be a nap in the case of spanking aftercare might also be about like applying, you know, skincare creams or balms or something to the skin, to, to the ass, to just help soothe it and massaging them into your partner's 
ass after you've spanked it can be really nice. And heads up, you can use any lotion. Arnica, aloe are good. But sometimes vitamin A or vitamin E stuff can be irritating. And heads up, I don't suggest using anything containing alcohol or urea because they actually can cause more pain. And anything with cooling, like cooling menthol, can definitely burn after a good spanking session. So just think about that. Um, okay, and then if there's any bruising or something, because I'm sorry, sometimes this happens. Some people bruise very easily. Some people don't. But if there's any bruising, then ice packs or oatmeal baths or Epsom salts can all provide relief. And then I definitely suggest the next day, like check in a few hours later and stuff, especially if you're not living together, just make sure that everybody's doing okay. Because if you've had this high, even if you haven't realized it, then sometimes there's a drop. So you want to be aware. So you want to just keep touching in and checking in, touching base, making sure that everybody's on the same page and that, that people are feeling good about sharing this experience, not somebody feeling used or resentful or being flooded with any sort of, oh my God, I'm a pervert, or I can't believe I did that or any of those things um because those things happen so do that and then i suggest you wait till at least 24 hours later before you do a debrief and debriefs are like what did you think oh did you want more here what could i have done right that's that's the time to give constructive feedback and to be kind of just straight to be straight with people and stuff but um and like some people will have a ritual maybe they always they do their debriefs um over coffee you know, two days later, or they go out for a drink, or they have a glass of wine, some people could go out for ice cream, and that's where they get to share. So whatever it is. Um, but just make sure that you do check in and find out because that's how you get better and you make it better for you for them for everybody. It's just not as great when you don't talk, you're missing out on opportunities to become more emotionally intimate, and to improve your sexual intimacy when you don't talk about this stuff. So please do. Which by the way, my book, Five Kinds of Intimacy, is going to be released on January 31st, 2023. So please go to BethDarling.com, sign up for my newsletter, so I'll let you know when you can pre-order it. Um, and maybe even you can be part of my, my launch team, please, my VIP launch team. And I'll be doing some different events and activities and things like that. And I'd love to have you be part of it. So you go to BethDarling.com. Ah, okay. Those, I think, are the basics that people should know about spanking is there anything else you can think of there aaron uh i mean again over and over communication is key no matter what um always make sure that you one it, i mean consent <laughs> first uh but you're communicating with your partner i mean in it it takes a lot to kind of put yourself out there if you think, you know, oh, they're going to think I'm weird or they're going to, you know, judge me and stuff like that. Yeah. Eventually you just kind of. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to sound really bad because you still hold on to it. But when you look back at the end of life, is that really the part that's going to stick into you, like sticking it out in your memory? Or is it going to be just another freaking tree that you passed on the highway of life, you know? If that's something that you think you want, if it's something you want to think you want to explore, and it, again, it doesn't have to be spanking, it could be anything in your sexy, fun life with your partner. Don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. I mean, as, again, as long as there's no illegal actions going on, as long as consent is involved for every person above the age of 18, whatever it is, mm -hmm. don't think that, yeah. oh, I'm going to be, you know, give it a shot. What's the worst that happens? They say mm -hmm. no. And if you're, I say this, if you're worried that your partner is going to freak out and leave you, maybe one, there's there's good ways to approach it. So you're not just, you know, fucking dropping a giant anvil on their head and going, hey, you want to do this? But also make sure your relationship's strong enough. You want to have a relationship with a person that's strong enough that can withstand the, babe, I think I want you to spank me. Oh, my God, you're weird. I'm out of here. OK, well, what the what the fuck were we doing here? Kind of thing. Right. Right. I say, and that's exactly, that's what I want people to get is I want the, I want y'all to feel supported. I want you to know, I say, this is, we laugh together. We laugh with each other because what turns me on, right? You see it with Aaron, what turns me on, Aaron thinks is crazy. What turns Aaron on, I think is crazy. And we just laugh about it, but it's so much better to realize that 
promise you, there is somebody who likes what you like. Um, and frankly, your partner might like what you like, but it might just take them time to get through it, to, to figure things out, to release some of the, the, the taboo, the guilt, the shame that we've all been raised with because we have, we're just different versions of it. So I just, um, yeah, don't feel like you're not entitled. Don't feel like you, you're sure feel weird. Like again, because you're different than me and just know I'm weird. You're weird. We're all weird. It's all beautiful. We are all snowflakes. And yet we have some commonalities. And once you admit what you want, then help Aaron and I are here to help make sure that you can get it in some way that this feels good. And if you like the idea of spanking, but your partner really is totally opposed to it, well, hell, then maybe you just talk about it. Maybe that's the the sexy part of your, your warm-up or part, part of the seduction. Maybe that's part of your sexy fun is just the dialogue about it, what it would be like. That works too. So there are all sorts of creative ways if you just own what it is you like and don't get shut down by shame like I did. It's not fun. It's not good. Yeah. Wasted a lot of years. No. Oh. All right. Then I know we are over time, but I'm going to go through super fast. I'm just going to give you here some extra pro spanking tips, right? When you're really into spanking, here's a couple of things or several things that you can do. So one, increased intensity, obviously. You can ask your partner to count each spank. Tell them they have to count how many. You, have, you can instruct your partner to thank you. Please, ma'am, please, sir, may I have another? Thank you, may I have another, right? Um, you can, yeah, you can use terms like mistress or ma'am or sir or daddy or whatever it is that, you know, Mr. So-and-so, principal, professor, dean, any of those terms. So um, adding some verbal, some dirty talk with it is a big one. Then vulva spanking, ball spanking, be very careful, be very gentle, make sure your partner likes it, but definitely, oh, breast boob spanking, there is a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. That could be a thing too. So again, there's the whole world opens up so many different things. Um, the, the rhythm, the changing the pace, um, and oh, adding spanking to the sexy role plays, obviously naughty schoolgirl, no, nurse, blah, 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 blah. Um, the dirty talk. Oh, talk about the shape of somebody's ass or their body in general. Talk about how red it's getting. Um, alternate between gentle and harder spanks. And, um, ooh, if you really want to increase sensation, especially if you're a woman spanking a man's ass because they, they can take a lot more, then you can put like a string of beads or you can deliberately put something with a little texture in your hand so that that is going to be more sensation. Again, start slowly, whatever you do. Um, Oh, ask if it's, if you're spanking a guy or a woman, just ask them to play with themselves while you're spanking them. That's, and tell them not to come or tell them to come. Either one, either one works. Um, and then you can get into using any instruments, but again, be careful. They are much more impactful than your hand, but you can use things around the house, belts, don't use buckles unless you're really, really into that level, but spatulas, mixing spoons, rulers, um, fly swatters, <laughs> hairbrush, hairbrush is a big one. Yeah. So all sorts of different things and create your own, not to mention paddles, floggers, things like that. So, yeah. Woohoo! All right. That's it. Don't you want to go spank your wife's ass right now, Aaron? I do, but I'm not going to go surprise her with that. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> but uh, oh. yeah, that's, that's now two weeks of talking spanking and that's what almost an hour and a half. Yeah. Well, there's there's plenty of information between last week and this week. So if yeah. it's if it's something that's interesting to you, go forth and find somebody to spank and enjoy it. Go forth or and spank. Spanked. Yes. Yes. Sexy spanking sensation. Yeah. Find your level of pleasure. Make it yours and just enjoy the hell out of it. So doesn't matter where you come from, who you are, gender, relationship, whatever. Enjoy the hell out of it. So. All right. So congratulations. I think spanking, again, it's a great way to increase all sorts of intimacy, sexy intimacy, emotional intimacies. Um, and, but you need that spiritual intimacy, which is that you need to know that it's okay. And I'm giving you permission. It is okay. You could be smart, successful, a male, female, 
or by non-binary and cool, smart, professional, and still like to get spanked. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Come With Us podcast for the bare naked truth about love, sex, and relationships and spanking. Um, and of course, please follow us, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, go join us and send us messages, send us emails. Let us know how your erotic spanking experiences go. Erin and I are so happy to be here with you. So glad to share this with you. Thanks for letting me share my passion and Erin's stories. We absolutely, we love you. We're glad you're here and can't wait to see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Come With Us podcast. Be sure to follow us on social media at Come With Us podcast and send in your questions, comments, and confessions to come with us confessions at gmail.com. Until next time, keep it fun, flirty, and naughty.